Hi there guys. In this video I'm going to try and explain to you some of the basics behind the Doppler effect as well as the complicated-ish formula and some ex that it goes with it and some examples that will work out. Uh, so let's get started. So the first question I have for you is if you've ever noticed how the pitch of a sound changes as it moves towards or away from you. Meaning if a car was driving by, so you're here in your house, doo -doo 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 -doo, and a car goes by with the horn blaring, does the sound of that car change from when it is going towards you versus when it's going away? And most of you would have the experience of hearing sounds where they've, a horn goes by you or a train goes by, where the sound is different when it approaches from when it leaves, goes by you. So what happens is as it's approaching, the pitch of the sound, how high the note is, is actually a higher sound. And then when it goes by, it changes to a lower noted sound. Even though the horn sound hasn't changed what's produced, what you actually hear is different. Uh, an episode of Big Bang Theory, Sheldon makes the noise for us. He goes, meow, over and over again. That would be the sound of the car going by, where it sounds higher at first and then lower afterwards. I'll do it again because I'm sure you must have loved it. Meow. So, this car that goes by you, the reason, part of the reason why it would be increasing is if the car is standing still at first and it creates sound waves, those sound waves are going to emanate out, and let's say they would be that far apart just to show the wave fronts. Well, what would happen is after it creates, then those would move forward. And bing, 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 you would hear them as they go by you. Well, what happens instead, if the car is moving, is that it would produce the first wave, and that first wave would move forward. And then before it produces the second wave, the car is moving, so it would move ahead a bit. The second wave would get produced. The two of those would then move forward. The car would move ahead before it produces the next wave. And so all of those waves would be much more compact than the waves above. Here you would have more waves going per second than you would there, much further apart. And if you have more waves per second, that's a higher note. So when the car is moving towards, the waves are scrunched together a bit more. That's a higher frequency. That's a higher pitch you would hear. Change that the other way. We'll erase these. If the car was moving away from you, so then it would produce one wave. That wave would move forward, but you're moving further. Okay, I should make the wave actually go towards you, shouldn't I? Let's flip that. So that wave would have been, the car was here. It produces the sound wave, which works its way back towards you, the observer. Then the car moves a bit and produces the next wave. Which both of those would move forward. The car moves a bit, produces the next wave. So those sound waves that are being produced now are further apart less waves per second, lower frequency, lower note. That's why it was a high note over here moving towards and a low note there when moving away. So to summarize what you're seeing there, when the source or the observer move, whoa, wait, or the observer move, let's slow down and go back and look at what happens. Oh, I just erased our stick, man. Annihilated them, so to speak. Okay, so we'll put observer back in here if that moves towards a stationary car so the car is producing these waves and they're sitting there well what you would hear if you were moving towards them is you would hear the first wave and then all three of those are moving but you're moving towards it so you would be running through those waves faster than if you were standing still if the observer moves towards those waves, you will hit more of them per second 
and if you were moving away from the waves, then you would hear less of them, or not hear less of them, but you would receive more, less per second. And if you were getting less waves per second when you moved away, that's still a lower frequency. And moving towards, you would hit more waves per second, still a higher frequency. So both, whether you're moving towards, or whether it's the source or the observer that's moving, if they go towards each other, the frequency you hear will be higher than the frequency produced. It doesn't change what frequency is actually being made by the car. It's just changing the frequency that the people are hearing. And so conversely, if either the source or the observer move away from each other, the frequency heard will be lower. If that's where you wanted to stop with Doppler shift and just have the theory of why is it the sound waves are higher or lower, that's good enough for you. However, for us physics students, it's not going to be good enough. We're going to look at a formula to quantify this and get some actual numbers and examples to work out. So, since a sound heard because of the Doppler effect is different than the sound being produced, we need a formula that's going to calcu calculate the sound heard, which we're going to call F prime, F with a line on it. That'll be the sound that the, somebody hears versus the actual sound that's being made. They won't be the same frequency. So in my formula, I'll have F prime here for the sound that you hear. It's equal to the original frequency times this weird ratio that you see. So it's a ratio of V plus VD over V minus VF, S. So we've already defined what these two frequencies are. It's just what these three velocities are going to be, V, VD, and VS. We're going to use V as the speed of sound in air, which you might have to calculate using that temperature formula we've seen, but it's just the speed of sound in air. Sometimes you'll assume it's 343 meters per second. Other times you may have enough information to calculate it like we did in previous questions. The two, the VS and the VD, are going to, the S and the D are going to stand for the detector and the source. So the detector's speed is VD, that's the person who is hearing. The source's speed, VS, is the one that's making the sound. The only rule we have when we're going to go plug these into the formula is that if the detector is moving towards the source, we're going to put a positive number into our formula. And if they're moving away, we're going to put it, you're going to make that speed a negative when we plug it in the formula. And the same is true for the source. If the source moves towards the detector, it's positive, and away from the detector, it is negative. So let's try this with an example or two and see what happens. So Dork Boson is flying by Captain Physics and yells a few choice words at him. If Dork Boson's voice has a frequency of 455 hertz, what does Captain Physics hear if Dork Boson's flying at 55 meters per second towards him? So we've got some, a lot of information given in here. We know that Dork Boson's voice has a frequency of 455, and he's the source because we want to know what does Captain Physics hear. So Captain Physics is the detector. And Dork Boson is the source, the one making the sound. So the speed of the source is 55 meters per second. So I'm going to write that the Vs is 55 meters per second. Now, Captain Physics, it doesn't mention anything about his speed at all. So I guess we'll assume that the detector is stationary and zero meters per second. Uh, the frequency that Dork Boson is making a sound is 455 hertz. So that is the source's frequency, so that is F, not F prime, but F of 455 hertz. And it mentions nothing about speed of sound, so we're going to assume that it's 343 meters per second. 
So 343 meters per second will just be V for speed of sound. 343 meters per second. Okay, so now I just want to make sure I'm thinking of my direction. If the source moves towards the detector, I want to make this 55 a positive. The VS, it says Dark Boson is flying by Captain Physics and yells a few choice words, and they use the word towards him. So we're going to put a plus because source was moving towards detector. So we know this is a positive 55. The detector is not moving, so it's just zero. So our formula, F prime, is F onto V plus VD over V minus VS. So we'll start plugging some of these numbers in. We have 455 hertz multiplied by 343 meters per second plus the speed of the detector, which is zero. And then 343 meters per second minus the speed of Dork boson, which is 55 meters per second. So we've applied our signs. We now can just start to work it out and resolve this question. So I'm going to need a bit more room. I'll leave the 455 here, hertz. That's the original frequency. We're just trying to figure out what's this multiplier going to be in here, this whole thing that you're going to either increase it or decrease it. So the numerator is still 343 meters per second because it's 343 plus 0. And the denominator is 343 minus 55. That's 293 meters per second. So we divide those two and multiply by 455. We'll take uh, 343 divided by times 455 gives me a new frequency, F prime, of 532.6 hertz. So we get a higher frequency heard than that which was produced. What's being produced is 455. You hear a higher frequency, and that makes sense because they're moving towards each other. And in our pictures before, if they move towards, you hit more waves, so you would have a higher frequency. Uh, sticking with significant digits, I guess, we look at our question, we should have three significant digits. So I guess we'd round that off just to be succinct to 533 hertz. All right, so what would change after Dork boson passes by? The only thing that's going to change... Your source is still not, or your source is still moving at 55 meters per second. Your detector is still stationary. The speed of sound is still 343. The frequency is still 455. The only thing changed is that you're now moving away. So you're going to put in a negative 55 meters per second. If you're moving away, the answer better be less than the original 455 meters per second. Really what's going to change here is if this step right here, uh, right in this point here, this sign is about to change because the 55 is now different. So I'll replug it in so we see where we're going with this. So F equals F prime, V plus VD, V minus VS. So you have 455 hertz. I'll drop the units now. You get 343 plus 0 over 343 minus a negative 55. So now you have, I'm going to move that down again, 455 hertz. Here you get 343 in the numerator. And the denominator, you now get 343 minus a minus 55 makes plus 55. You have 398 meters per second. So if we take 343, divide by 398, multiply by 455, you get an answer of 392 hertz. The new frequency heard... I wrote these backwards in my first form, excuse me. F prime equals the original F. 
uh, the new frequency heard is 392 hertz. The new frequency is actually less than what the person was making because he was moving away. So now we'll add one last piece of information on here, and we're going to say Captain Physics, let's say he doesn't like that. He's about to throw down because you're not going to talk to him like that. And so he's going to chase after Dirk Boson and give him a pummeling. So we still have the same information, but what has changed now is that the detector is now chasing after the source and going at 65 meters per second. All the other information is still the same. VS is moving away at 55, so it's a negative 55. The original sound, that's a VS here, the original sound is still 455 hertz. Speed of sound in the air is still 343. And just checking if Captain Physics is chasing after him, that means he's going towards him. So his speed will be positive. Dork Boson, the source, is still moving away, so he's still going to be negative. Everything else should stay the same. We'll try and write the formula properly this time. F prime equals F onto V plus VD, V minus VS. So we have a frequency of 455 hertz. Multiply by 343 plus VD, which is 65, over 343 minus VS, which is a negative 55. So we have 455 hertz. On top, you have 408 meters per second when you add 343 and 65. On the bottom, you still have 398 meters per second. We'll take the ratio of those, so 408 divided by 398 times 455 gives us 466 hertz. A slight increase, which is what you would expect, because overall, uh, there's a 10 meter per second increase in the distance between them. So Captain Physics, who's still the detector and chasing the source, is of slowly catching up to him. So we should hear a higher frequency than what is being produced. So there's three different examples. You have to watch the signs, but all three of those examples should help you work out the questions that you have on your worksheet or any other problems you have. Good luck.